don't do these things. Well, this thing, I think I'm going to make multiple videos of these. <laughs> if you are getting started in wholesaling, um, I've literally seen so many people do this and it's so freaking annoying. So let's say that you're getting started in wholesaling and for some reason your guru taught you to look for properties on the MLS, right? Nothing wrong with that. But here's what I see most people do, and it's literally annoying to like 10th degree. Um, so what they do is they find the property on the MLS. Usually they find one that's been, I don't know, on the market for like months and months, right? The deal that, that is just overpriced or there's some major things wrong with it. Most of the time it's just overpriced. If there's major things wrong with it, some investors are going to buy it. But like I said, half the time it's just ridiculously overpriced. So what they do is they get this property under contract, then they try to market it to investors um, that are in that area. So why is that an issue? So here's what most guys do that is literally so annoying. So I've seen this multiple times from multiple guys, right? So here's an example. What ends up happening is, let's just say this property is $200,000 and it's been on the, like I said, MLS for months and months. No one's buying it, it's just sitting there because it's overpriced. It's, it's been on there for four months maybe, right? Who knows? And again, no one's buying it because it's ridiculously overpriced for that market maybe, right? So let's say that this guy, Mr. Wholesaler, gets it under contract for 190K. Okay, that's not, okay, they get $10,000 off. That's not the annoying part. Then what they end up doing is they end up marketing that property to investors that are buying maybe fix and flips or rentals in that property for 210 or 220. <laughs> Grant, I don't really know the, legality and like how you can actually do that if you're a wholesaler you get a property under contract through an agent and then you're trying to like market it forward i'm pretty sure you could do it it's just super convoluted and confusing and unnecessary but the annoying part is they're trying to sell a property that hasn't sold four months for 200k for 200 to 220k <laughs> so two two issues here um when an investor invests in a certain market, right? Let's just call a city Roseville. And all they do is invest in that city. They are literally watching the MLS every single day because every once or twice a year, a crazy deal pops up. So everyone's always watching. And again, another way of getting deals as an investor, you're always watching the MLS, seeing the stuff that's been up there forever, seeing the price drops, seeing if you can make a deal work, right? So what I'm trying to say is most investors have already seen this property for 200K. So now you're trying to market this property as a deal with fudge numbers, right? Because obviously the numbers, if they didn't work at 200, they're not going to work at 210 or 220. Even at 190, which you probably got it for, they're not going to work, right? It's just this house is way overpriced. So that is... Why, why is this annoying? So it's annoying, well, first of all, as a wholesaler, think about it this way. If you're a wholesaler and you're bringing that to an investor, most likely if I'm investing in that area, I know that house. And I know it's up and up for 200 and I know it's overpriced and I've probably already talked to the agent and maybe I need to get it at like, I don't know, 150 or 120 for it to work. So I already know the house very well. Most investors in that area probably know the house very well. So when you bring this property to investors as a wholesaler for, <laughs> again, more than what it's listed for, there's no way for the investor essentially to keep take you seriously, right? You don't know your numbers and you don't, it, it just doesn't make sense, right? So not like I respect the hustle and I respect everyone's like, trying to make deals happen and make deals work. But I've just seen this so many times and it's so annoying because you just see these properties over and over again and <laughs> everyone's trying to market it as a good deal and, and it's not, right? Um, 
So just kind of like where are the whys, if you're getting started wholesaling, um, just make sure you know your numbers really well and your ARV. Um, and if you don't know your numbers really well, and like you said, you are getting started wholesaling, you can reach out to an investor that is in that market and that knows that market and probably knows the things you're looking at. And you can be like, hey, you know, I'm thinking this property is worth X and I'm thinking you can put Y in it and get Z profit for it, or whatever the numbers are, right? And most of the time the investor is gonna be like, hey, you know what, I probably can't make it work at that number, but if you can get me this house at this number, I can probably make it work, right? So that's probably the best way of approaching it, kind of working together with someone. But I know a lot of new wholesalers, they're scared that others will um, like essentially steal their deal, right? And granted that does happen, but those people that do that kind of stuff, they're not like in if they right, they have like no reputation because you do that once to a wholesaler, to anyone as an investor, you just get a bad rap, right? So anyway, whole nother tangent. But what I'm trying to say is if you're starting wholesaling and you are finding properties on the MLS and you're getting a tiny bit of discount on it and then marketing it to other investors for way over, mostly properties that have been on the MLS for ages, um, not a lot of people are gonna take you seriously. And when you do send a deal that might be a deal, people are probably either gonna ignore your email or they already threw your email into junk or they're ignoring your text messages because they know the stuff you send, right? So just kind of be mindful of that. And I'm not, not to say that like maybe you got a property that let's say it's a $200,000 neighborhood and you got a property under contract for 50K because you were like the first one to see it and now you're trying to sell it off for like 60 or 70. Right, that might work, but that, that's a different scenario. What I'm saying is I've just seen this so many times and to me, it's just super, super annoying. So as a wholesaler, make sure you know your numbers. Make sure if you don't know your numbers, ask an investor that's in that market. Don't even give them the address. Just be like, hey, I wanna buy this house for this much. I think it's worth this much. Just get their opinion because that's all they do, right? And being new, um, you gotta learn stuff before you can you know, be good at it. So anyway, hope this video made sense. And like I said, if you're a wholesaler, please don't do that. Please, it is so, so annoying. And I see it all the time with all sorts of properties and all sorts of people. Um, there's way more better deals out there. Don't, don't even waste your energy on stuff like that. There's, there's a million and one deals out there, right? You just gotta look in the right place to find it. So hope you have a great night and let me know if you got any questions. Let me know if you have any questions. Kinda messed that up. <laughs>